Well, we all knew regression was coming, but the Mariners have seemingly hit a brick wall. That's now four losses in their last seven games with a 6-3 to three defeat at the hands of the Reds. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Monday, September 4th, 2023. Happy Labor Day, everyone. This is Titan Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the game. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube. Or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as their social accounts, is in the description of this episode. Six to three, the final score from Cincinnati. Mariners lose their series opener with the Reds and have now lost four of their last seven games. They will remain in first place for today, however, thanks to an Astros win over the Rangers. Uh, but their playoff buffer has unfortunately dropped to two games with a Blue Jays win in Oakland. Colby, uh, this has now been a full week of lackluster baseball from the Mariners. And, you know, I don't want to say the wheels are falling off because, I mean, look at the Rangers. If you want an example of the wheels actually falling off, that's probably it. But this isn't good either. The Mariners are playing their worst ball in over a month. The pitching has been flat. The at-bats have been pitiful. It's a bad product to watch right now so floor is yours what's on your mind (sighs) you know it's it's interesting that you know we say they drop four of seven and and like uh it's the time to panic and all that stuff and that that means they went three and four like they only dropped a game yeah that doesn't Um, sound that bad yeah no but that's just how well they've been playing since july 1st and now in back-to-back days they lost by three runs when they hadn't lost by three in in more than a month well Um, and and i think it's also a testament to how close this playoff race is right every single game matters in a big way right right i mean we're, we're sitting here talking about like oh they they still hold on to first like that means anything on on september 4th it doesn't like yeah um just mention this right off the top tomorrow we're doing a mailbag episode we are not answering any questions about who would you rather face in the playoffs who would you how would you line up your rotation in the playoffs you have to get there first are you right. nuts you're sitting here t- asking us about oh would you rather face the rangers or the twins in the playoffs let's get there Let's let's get to a point where the club is playing good ball. And by the way, they still have nine more games to go before their next day off. They're against good teams. We know this. We know that their schedule. And th- if they play like this against even Texas, who's struggling at the end of the year, they have a shot to lose all those games. So miss me with the whole like, oh, how do you what's the playoff roster look like? No, we're not answering those questions. You have to get there um, before any of that stuff even matters. And right now, while you're still in a good position, you are fading uh, your position is fading pretty quick. Thankfully, you know, the rest of the American League West sucked uh, this weekend, too. So at the end of the day, you've lost one game on Houston, and that's the net. Uh, one game on Texas, one game on Texas, one game on Houston. Like, that's the net. Uh, so that's good, I guess. But, yeah, this team's got to play better. In the last three days in particular, it's been really bad starting pitching. Uh, that is just, and it's been early and constant. And, and thankfully, the Mariners were able to win one of those games uh, because it's the one game where the offense actually showed up early and often. Um, but yeah, it's it's been three really bad starts in a row. Uh, there's no need to sugarcoat it. There's no like, well, you know, Brian Wu battled and he got through five. Cool, he didn't absolutely murder your bullpen today. That's not good enough. That's not what you're looking for. Um, and with Wu, it's a little more like reasonable. Uh, to give him that out. But Luis Castillo and George Kirby were awful, awful. And you need those guys. Those are your aces. They have to be better than that. You have another, you have more pitching advantages the next two days. You have to take advantage of it. More importantly, you have to get out of those first couple of innings unscathed. You cannot constantly play from behind and expect this offense to, to pick you up because what this offense is right now, if Julio isn't going into God mode, which he wasn't today, although a very impressive home run, um, he left a small village on the bases with a couple bad at bats. Fine, whatever. That's going to happen. Right. But 
if that's going to happen, then you need a Eugenio to be better. You need Ty France to be better because if either JP, uh, Julio or Teoscar struggle, and today all three of them had their moments with not great at bats, but you know, they all contributed some, but if they're, if all three, if one of those three isn't going to just, you know, carry you, then this offense is pretty shallow right now. Cause you're talking about Dom Canzone and, and Canzone is, Kind of a hit or hit or miss every day. We don't know what you're going to get. Cal Raleigh didn't play a lot, didn't play today uh, until the end, and he's kind of hit or miss too. Like this offense is not that deep. Uh, Josh Rojas has cooled off since the start of the road trip. Like you have to get more from guys who you've counted on in the past, and right now that's mostly ta- or that's mostly uh, Gino and Ty France. They have to be better. Good to see Ty back in there today after you know a scary hit by pitch. Um, but I mean, my Lord, the, I've never seen a slower runner than Ty trying to beat out a ball that ricocheted off the pitcher, clanked off the second baseman's glove, rolled out to center field and the shortstop had with a delayed reaction to field and still throw him out by two steps. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's hurting your That's team. That's embarrassing. Right it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Ty France is, is the worst player on your team right now. And that is a problem. He has to be at least neutral he has to be at least he's not going to kill us and right now he is and again because julio didn't go into god mode today because teoscar didn't go into god mode because jp you know didn't get on base four times like you need somebody else to step up and and right now nobody's doing that and it's been a couple you know i say rough games for julio knowing that yesterday he hit like i think two balls at 110 miles an hour and today he had you know just a mammoth opposite field home run um, but you know, relative to what he did in August, it's been, you know, a couple, eh, okay, okay, but not great days for Julio and the rest of the guys have to step up because you're not going to get Julio going four for five every single day to bail you out. It's well, and when happen. you say bad days, it doesn't necessarily have to be his fault, right? It can also just no, no, be no, no, bad no. luck, right? You suffered from bad luck and therefore had a bad day because of that, right? So more like yesterday, yesterday than today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then 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 today, of course. Yeah. Because today, I mean, yeah, he had two really awful at bats. I mean there was a couple of questionable calls during those at bats as well, but he, he needs, still. he still needs to be able to overcome that. And he had an opportunity, what to take the lead, right. With the bases loaded where he, yep. uh, where you fouled off 95 down the middle, down the middle. That's the pre breakout Julio, right? That yep. was the, that was the issue that was really plaguing him was that he was getting those opportunities and not taking advantage of them. That was a big opportunity there where, you know, maybe he doesn't put that ball on the seats, but he's at least going to get two with that. He should be able to get right. at least two with that. It just hit the ball hard in fair territory, right? Don't miss yeah. it. Like maybe you yeah. hit a screaming line drive and it's right at Ellie De La Cruz, but like at least you gave yourself a shot. So yeah, there's that too. Yeah. It, it's just one of those things. You just, he, he, you can't miss those pitches. And, and I felt like Teoscar missed and he chased a lot. Gino, again, continues to struggle. Um, Ty France continues to struggle. Mike Ford actually had a good day, he had an infield single because, you know, that that's something that totally happens. Right. Um, also at the big home run. But right now this team is basically relying on solo home runs and they're not stringing at bats together. Uh, they've they've done it once in this little skid, you know, against the Mets on Saturday. But really, yeah. aside, aside from that game, it's been they're living and dying by the home run. They're not stringing good at bat after good at bat together. They're chasing a lot more. It feels like they're, they're chasing worse pitches. Like there's kind of in a funk right now. And it's really hard to watch, especially because, well, a, the division is right there for you to take. Like if the Mariners were playing well right now, if they'd kind of continued what they were in August, they'd be two, three games up on the Astros and four or five up on the Rangers right now. Like yeah, the opportunity was there. So while it's good that the, the rest of the playoff field is struggling a little bit, like it's still a huge missed opportunity. So yeah, again, yeah. the fact that they hold on to first place here on September 4th, who cares? Who cares? You, you only care about the standings on October 2nd, right? The season ends October 1st. Like that's yeah. when you care. So I just, they have to play better. Like at the end of the day, if the Mariners continue to play like this for the rest of the month, which again, it's a small sample size, they could turn it around as early as tomorrow, but yeah. Um, if they do continue to play like this, forget who do you want to play in the playoffs. You're not going to get that choice. You're going to be on the outside looking in. Um, so yeah, uh, the Mariners have to start playing better and it, I, it starts. Let's be very clear about this. It starts with the starting pitching. You're built on pitching. Yep. You have to be better than you have in the last three days. It's, it's not a, well, you know, hopefully no, 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 no. It's have to, you yeah. have to be better than you were the last three days. Uh, but the offense certainly hasn't uh, carried their part either. 
Um, so yeah, they're just kind of, you know, not clicking right now and you hope that they turn that around, but you know, kind of the thing with this Mariners team this year has been like long stretches of mediocrity, long stretches of greatness. There's been very, very few like small spurts of like bad and then they turn good again. Like it's been mostly just, you know, they are what they are for a couple of weeks and then, and then they kind of cycle through. So yeah. Can they turn it around? I hope so. The pitching matchups certainly say they can the next few days, but they've had the pitching advantage this entire road trip, except for maybe Friday. And yeah. here they sit one and three on the road trip. And Friday right? was the best pitch game that they got this whole yep. road trip so far. Go figure. So, yeah, yeah, they got to play better. At the end of the day, that's what it is. They have to pitch or they have to pitch better. They have to hit better. They have to string together good at bats. Like they're not playing well this week. Yeah. And yeah they had the last week. They had the seven nothing win last yep. Monday, and then they, you know, they scored eight on Saturday and won that game. But outside of that, this offense is just—it's been bad. Like when it's been bad, it's been really bad. And they have not been facing juggernaut pitching staffs by any stretch. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they got to pick it up. Like everybody on the team, like who do you blame the most? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's been bad except for the bullpen. Yep. I'll give the bullpen some credit. They've had to cover a lot of innings the last three or four days. Yeah. Yeah. And they've done a good job. They've given up a run here or there, but when you're covering four or five, six innings a night, like only giving up one or two is pretty darn good. So yeah, kudos to the guys out on the pen. A couple of them have struggled, yes, in their outings, but overall they've been really solid. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, again, they've covered what four innings today and gave up a run. Like you'll take that every time. Yeah, they're holding it down. They're holding yeah. it down. Uh, but yeah, they, they need better starting pitching performances especially out of guys like Brian Wu. Let's talk about him in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners postgame show is brought to you by Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, visible scalp coverage. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONMLB. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code locked on mlb that's neutral.com slash men promo code locked on mlb and you're listening to the locked on mariners post game show thank you again for making us your first listen after the mariners six to three loss to the cincinnati reds game two of the series is tomorrow night or well tomorrow afternoon actually 3 30 start time pacific you can catch all the action on the mariners hometown broadcast of sirius xm via the sxm App. So Brian Wu did not get off to a particularly good start in this game. He was able to give you three more innings after that of scoreless ball, which, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, great from the perspective of saving your bullpen at least a little bit. Obviously, they had to cover a lot of innings yesterday with Kirby only going three. Um, but this is just not what you want. So the, the question that I want to ask you here is, I mean, we've been wondering it for a long time now. We've talked about it a long time now for the last you know month or two. You know, has Wu finally found the end of his rope? Maybe, but I don't know because he's been pretty much hit or miss for the last month or so. Uh, well, since he came back from the IL, um, he's had you know some good starts, some bad starts, and and so. I'm not seeing a ton on the on the velo front that suggests that he's uh, you know tiring or anything like that. Um, but today, you know, he tried to go back to the cutter against the lefties, and he just had no command of it, none. Um, he hit a couple guys in the foot, and then obviously the the he even threw a cutter to Noelvi when he hit Marte in in the elbow pad. So um, I think all three hit by pitches were on the cutter. So he just did not have that pitch uh, at all today. Um, he didn't have any issue getting ahead of guys. Uh, he had issues finishing them off because if you don't, ha- again, if you're trying to throw the cutter and you don't have it, like you're kind of screwed. Like he can get swings and misses on the fastball, but as we know, like 
huge whiff rates on a fastball are is, is pretty rare. Uh, it's not typically a swing and miss pitch. So um, he has to have something off speed. He has to have something different. If he doesn't have the cutter, he doesn't trust the changeup. Um, then you know he's going to get into some good O2 counts with good challenging fastballs, but hitters are going to shorten up. They're going to put the ball in play, and and especially if they don't even have to worry about another pitch coming. So yeah. I don't know if Wu's hit the wall. Only he can really answer that. Um, he should be pretty well rested, though. I mean, he he got extra rest before this start. He had the two weeks off in August. Like, it just I don't see a reason why we should just assume it's definitely that he's hit the wall. Um, but also, he's got to push through it because you really don't have any other options uh, or answers for that spot. So. Uh, I would say I don't think he's hit the wall, but also I have no idea how you would even tell because he he's through strikes again. He just couple pitches here and there, um, and mostly you know plenty of o two one two counts. Just couldn't finish them, just like George Kirby the day before. So I don't know. I don't know if he's if he's finished or if he's you know hit the rookie wall or whatever. But he's kind of you got to kind of try and find a way to push him through it, or or um, you know you got to help him with bullpenning or, or, you know, an opener or something, uh, because you don't really have a bolt guy that you can throw right now. Well, his velo was down on all of his pitches today, pretty significantly <clears throat> too. The, the cutter was down by almost two full miles per hour. The sinker was down, mm-hmm. uh, by one and a half miles per hour. Same with the four seam. Like that right. does seem <clears throat> concerning. It's, it, it was a hot day in Cincinnati. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I guess it's just really a thing that you need to wait and see in the next start, you know, if these issues crop up again. Um, and, you know, he looked fine for the final three innings where he went scoreless today. Like, it wasn't terrible. It seemed like he kind of got some things under control here. But, yeah, like you mentioned, right, it's like if he is hitting a wall, you're kind of in a bad spot because you don't really have anyone else. I mean, Luke Weaver is the guy and uh, yeah, I don't like, I know you really like Luke Weaver, but I don't want him trust. I don't want him starting games in a playoff race. Yeah. Same, same. So So, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully this is not that hopefully this was just a bad start for Wu. Didn't have his best stuff. Just didn't feel sharp today. Just for whatever reason. And then he gets back on the horse next time around because the, the mayor is really, they need him, right? Because he has, what, three, four starts left? I think he's got four left if they stay in current alignment. Yeah. So, and one of those is going to come in the in the final series against Texas, which may or may not be for a playoff spot, let alone the division. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see. All right, so let's talk more about the series in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners postgame show is brought to you by Sleeper. The MLB playoffs are right around the corner, which means the clock is ticking on your chance to 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. Pick more or less on stats for your favorite players like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to a 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right and you can win big if things don't. Well, in your home league this year, you can still salvage the fantasy baseball season over at Sleeper. There you can pick the players you want and call your shot. And when you use promo code Locked On, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners' 6-3 to loss to the Cincinnati Reds. You can catch game two of this series tomorrow on the Mariners' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. So you mentioned it earlier, Colby. Uh, the Mariners still have the pitching advantage in the series. They weren't able to take advantage of that today. They weren't able to take advantage of a bullpen game for the Reds. Uh, tomorrow is very interesting on multiple levels. Connor Phillips, former Mariners prospect, is making his major league debut against his former team, the team that drafted him just, what, three years ago, two years ago? It wasn't that long Mm -hmm. ago. The Mariners drafted Connor Phillips. He was, of course, the player to be named later in the Jesse Winker and A. Eugenio Suarez trade, uh, going along with uh, Justin Dunn, Jake Fraley, and Brandon Williamson. Uh, you're going to be countering with Bryce Miller, and then on uh, Wednesday, uh, the Reds initially had Lion Richardson 
scheduled to pitch in that game. That has now turned into a to be determined because uh, Richardson was sent down today. So not sure what the plan is there on Wednesday for the Reds. And you're going to be countering with Logan Gilbert. So you have the advantage here. And with the way that this team is playing right now, you don't want this to snowball. I think that the next two games are must-win games. Like, you have to win these these next two games against Cincinnati just because mm. how things are rolling right now. But seriously, man, like, th- this team is... Like, you don't want to spiral, especially no. at this time of year. You don't want to get too down on yourself, and you got to play the Rays next. So, like, I, I, I think yeah. you really need to take advantage of this opportunity here. No, I, I think you... you really should um but i don't know if i would go as far as must win but like yeah we're getting to the point where every win matters so like in kind of a you know big picture uh grand scheme of things uh type of beat like yeah every game is kind of must win knowing that you're going to lose some so um, this is why winning the first game of a series is so important you can kind of make decisions in game two that you know you can take a few more risks because you have a game in your back pocket. Now the Mariners, they have to win series uh, because, you know, Toronto is playing uh, some really bad teams right now. And, and even though, you know, they're not blowing these teams out by any stretch, the Rockies and today the A's, um, they're still playing bad teams. So they can make up that two game difference pretty quick on you. Um, Houston and Texas play each other the next two days. So, you know, however that works, it works. It doesn't really matter if you win your two. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I don't know if I'd say these are must win games, but they're games that you should win. Like you should be reasonably certain that you're going to win those games. And I'm, I'm, I'm not like, I'm certainly not, uh, confident that they're going to win, uh, those games, uh, despite the, the pretty obvious pitching matchup and, and, you know, the, the Reds bullpen right now, they have two healthy starters. Uh, they're, they're just bullpenning the heck out of this. And Connor Phillips is a guy that. Yes, he's got good stuff, and yes, he'll probably rack up some strikeouts tomorrow, but he is going to walk guys, or he is going to be wild. He's going to be around the plate. So He's walking almost seven guys per nine in AAA. Right, and so you know, you never know. Maybe tomorrow just happens to be a day where he has pinpoint command. Highly unlikely. Uh, So you can't chase. You cannot help him. He has good stuff, but he will put himself in trouble. So the key to tomorrow's game is work counts, and when you get that pitch down the middle, when you get that 2-0 fastball, because Phillips is trying not to walk guys, you better do damage on it. Um, so yeah, I think Phillips will probably, you know, strike out a fair number of guys because he's not got that type of stuff, but there should be no shortage of base runners. There should be no shortage of opportunities, um, you know, for this Mariners offense to, you know, kind of right the, right the wrong, uh, turn, turn the ship around. There you go. There you go. Um, so right. Yeah, the ship. Yeah, sure. It, it, it just, they have to do it. And, you know, it'd be amazing if Bryce Miller could go seven for the first time in his career. But if he gives you six, then you're probably pretty happy with that because you should have Brash, you should have Munoz, you should have Topa he and Spire. Seven. I think he's gone six and two thirds. Oh, well, he might have gone seven in his very first start against Oakland. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I felt like he went seven. Now I'm curious. Now you got me <laughs> just on one of those little things where I'm like, maybe, I don't know. Uh, he went seven against Detroit. In his third start. Okay. And against the White Sox in uh, June. Do those count? No. <laughs> but uh, they don't they don't fit your narrative. So yeah, no. they don't count. Yeah. No, but still, it's not like that Miller's a guy that you like, oh yeah, we'll just have him go 110 pitches and like right. Yeah. It, it's you gotta you don't have to work as hard as you do with Wu to kind of manage his his workload, but it's still there a little bit. So yeah. hopefully, you know, Miller can can I don't know. Would it would it kill him to work through the first the first time through the order without giving up a run? Give your offense some time to cook so they're not playing from a hole immediately. Like that would be great. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, but you you don't know. Like you don't. Know. For all we know, Phillips is, you know, their adrenaline and whatever just creates this great moment for him. And and Miller struggles, and all of a sudden you've lost this series and you've lost two series in a row. Like that has to be on the table. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's hard to feel good about the club based on how they played in the last seven games and while you don't want the seven games to override the previous what 30 or whatever yeah we're getting down to it man like we have 25 games left 26 games left you know and and we know that um the mariners are not locks to make the playoffs they're still in good position to make the playoffs but 
they're by no means in. There are four teams right now fighting for three spots, which means somebody is going to be watching in October. Oh, yeah. And if you don't start playing better, it's going to be you. So right. um, Th- this is the result of your first half struggles that even just an all time run that you went on just gets you to the point of contention. Like it doesn't even guarantee you a spot. Like you are still in the thick of it or now you're in the thick of it just now, even after that run. Like, so you're still at a point where a bad week might kill your season. Yeah. And you might be in the midst of that bad week because again, after this, you go to Tampa Bay, no day off. You don't get a day off. Um, so there's no chance to reset your bullpen and you kind of look at what the starters have done the last few days. You've ridden that bullpen pretty darn hard. So, you know, this could be a thing where like you could lose four in a row to Tampa. And if you do that, like your season is in in danger. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you have to, you have to play better. Like at the end of the day, like if you can get through this, what is it, a 10 game road trip? If you can get through this 10 game road trip at, you know, four and six, you're probably okay. But right now, I mean, you could go two and eight. That's how, that's how you're playing right now. So, um, yeah, you, you just have to, you have to start banking wins. And, and the best way to, you know, hold off the, the Astros or the Rangers or the Blue Jays is to never give them a chance to catch you because you just keep on winning. Obviously a 25 game win streak isn't realistic, but you can't go and lose, you know, 14 of 25 and expect to make the playoffs. You're probably not going to, if you do that. So there's no reason to panic yet, but you know, concern meters up a little bit. And, and we saw them do this last year, by the way, in September as well. And it worked out fine. Um, 13 to 12 loss against the Royals. Right, right, right. Yeah. But it just, it it's because there's three playoff spots open to you this year. Instead of last year, there was two and really one. Yeah. And that's great, but you're also, you know, again, you're only a game and a half up, well, two games technically on Toronto, and you're tied with Houston. And so it just, well, you have to play one better. game up on Houston. Uh, Houston won today, so technically yeah, you're tied, tie but obviously tie the tiebreaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and you don't have that tiebreaker on Texas, and you're probably not going to have it. So, yeah, um, play better. Like at the end of the day, it's it's really simple. I, yeah. I I hate to be you know repetitive and all that stuff, but like again, if you go eleven and I don't, I think they have twenty five games left. Maybe it's twenty six, but. Whatever you go four, five, you go four games under five hundred the rest of the way. You're probably missing the playoffs. That's just the reality of the situation. Unless yeah. Texas just continues I mean, to implode. I mean, we'll see about Texas because uh, that dude, bullpen is is bad. It's it's getting exposed hard right now. Right. Like they were they were in that game with Houston today, and then the, the bullpen Houston. came in, and they the Houston dropped like nine yeah. unanswered on their on their sure. head like. They're yeah. in a bad spot. They're in a bad spot and they're losing in bad ways too. Like that's right. that's got to be mentally demoralizing for that clubhouse right now. Like knowing that you had this lead in the AL West. Now you've lost it. Now you're losing your grip on the playoffs as a whole. It kind of reminds me in a way of the A's back in what 2014 when they got off to that insane start in the first half. They traded for Jason Hamill and Jeff Samarja. And then they barely made it into the postseason, and then they lost to the Royals mm-hmm. in the uh, in the wild card. Like, that's kind of that their season kind of reminds me of that a little bit here. But I don't know if they're even going to be able to hang on. I mean, a lot of that is also going to be dependent on the Mariners, how yep. the Mariners fit into this thing. Because I, I think the Astros are going to make it. I'm not really concerned about the Astros making it or no. not. But the Blue Jays are in the easiest part of their schedule. They're winning the games that they need to be winning for the most part. They did drop one to Colorado or two to Colorado. I can't remember one, but one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to get caught up in a mid off here. Like I don't want the Mariners to get right. caught up in a mid off with the Rangers. I just bury them, well, bury the blue Jays, bury the Rangers, whoever it is, bury them. Right. And you had a chance to really do that to Texas the last seven days and you didn't, and you had a chance to, I mean, not as good of a chance, but you had a chance to really kind of put Toronto to bed and you didn't. And now they're right back in it. So uh, just again, like I know it's cliche. I know it's like, oh, that's not analysis. But at the end of the day, it's true. You have to play better. You're better than the teams you're playing right now. 
act like it, play like it, win. Yeah. And if you win, if you go out there and you, if you go, you know, 15 and 10 in these last 25 or whatever, if you go three, four, five games over 500 for the rest of the month, you're probably making the playoffs. In fact, you have a good chance to win the division. It shouldn't be that hard, but you have to play better because you are going to get four against Tampa. You are going to get three against the Dodgers. Like there, you got three against Houston. You know, you got seven against Texas. Who's probably going to be fighting for their playoff live. Just like you like, yeah. And you only have two days off from here until the end of the year. You're in a dog fight right now. You got to start acting like it. Every game matters. Every out matters. Every pitch matters. Every at bat matters. Start winning them or you're going to be on the outside looking in in October. And we're going to have to have a long discussion about how the Mariners choked down the stretch or whatever. Um, and that's not a conversation I'm, I'm all that interested in having. So same win more same. pitches. Yeah. Would not like to uh, spend my off season talking about that. So please don't do that. Thank you. Yep. Signed locked on Mariners. Signed that's going to do it for yeah, that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mirrors postgame show. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You follow me at Dane Gonzalez, C A N E G N Z L Z, and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. That's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the game. You can catch game two of this series on the Mariners' hometown broadcast tomorrow with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.